Hello there. Let's go look on the new release of Affinity Photo 2 and we also compare some top functionality with Adobe Photoshop. See if it's worth it actually to switch from Photoshop to Affinity if it is new features and releases it's worth it. So let's go start actual first with the pricing because kind of the two different model pricing the Adobe going with a subscription and Affinity going with a single purchase. So let's go ahead right here, Adobe Affinity. We go to buy and you'll notice currently it's actually around 40% off its introduction kind of new version generation price. And it's around $40, $70 for full versions without discount, $40 so right now with discount and you can buy for different platform, Mac, Windows or mobile devices. However, if you look below, they run very nice Affinity Universal license, which is only $100, but it provides you not just the Affinity Photo 2, it's also provide Designer 2 and Publisher 2. Uh, equivalent to Adobe, it will be Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe InDesign. So it's kind of the uh, competitors to where they're going. However, the pricing again, it's a $99, which is good. And it's you pay once you own, you use it for as long you want it or as long your computers can support these applications. Let's look right now on Adobe and you notice they have a different application. For example, if you want every, every, not every, but every graphical, like in design, you want to Illustrator, you want Adobe Photoshop. So it's cost you about $55 a month. Right now, they run a Black Friday special, which is $40. They often have it some promotion, but this promotion run only for one year. So remember after one year, it will jump back to $55 monthly. So you need to pay two months and you will have a full price where you can pay right now for Affinity. So definitely Affinity is work. However, if you just look for the Photoshop type in a like Lightroom, you can go with Photography Plus. Notice right here, it's price says $20. However, if you click on compare plans, you can go to another page where you can find $9, $10, a month deal and this is what's staying for a long time ten dollars for photographer i think at one time they tried switch prices but have a big backlash from the community and they keep at this plan however in one year you're paying 120 dollars just for the application to use and after one year if you stop paying it means you cannot access anymore so keep it in mind subscriptions versus owner and I give it this definitely Affinity 2 is much winner on this because pricing relatively low and most important you own you don't need to worry about subscriptions okay let's go ahead and next step we'll look on Adobe Photoshop and specifically working with raw files so if you work with a Lightroom you know and right Lightroom will directly open raw files from the image for those who doesn't know raw image it is what a native camera to specific different camera Fuji Canon Nikon whatever you're shooting with it's a manufacturing creating a format to perform the best quality that can do shot from this camera will have a higher dynamic range more uh, color bit and so on but not every application supported and most likely your monitor probably won't support it that high bit resolution and right here example camera raw, which is provide you image you can upload it more than one image you also can have all these configurations you can pre-done but general what do you do you have options to modify um, exposure contrast highlights all these elements um, you also have access to the curves lighting so it's a quite a bit actually power tools to the point in a camera you actually can perform masking you can prefer can do sharpening selective sharpening and so it is by itself very powerful tool by it so but you need a process raw image inside these applications when you're done you can open inside the photoshop as an object as a link or as a new file so we'll just open as new file and if we look inside the affinity you'll notice affinity does not require any external applications it's natively inside the application support camera raw files which is provided very similar, not exactly the same. For example, we don't have it like some highlights and shadows, which I like have it in Photoshop. Uh, honestly, for many people, maybe they never will use this, but we also have it all this information, focus, additional um, data. And on the bottom, you can see a little bit below, we have it all similar things that was in Adobe a camera raw um, what is make different here that we are performing one applications similarity come up in the point you're not actually will going to work on this image that you're processing right now to start working with layers and other effects and everything you actually need to click button develop and this is a step you can see very fast you can the flex script from one to another screen but it is step a new necessary step because what we've done we take like 24 bit or 28 bit image and we 
convert this to the 8 or 16 bit so we can work directly with some filters inside the um, Affinity Photo. You can jump back from Affinity. If you go back to develop, you can go back to your raw. And this is a big plus because you actually work on directly a raw file. Back, you can modify and you can go again back and forward to modify on this. You can do similar in Adobe Photoshop, but with some limitations. So if you have a file and you open us directly, you can go inside the filter. And right here, you can see you have camera raw filters, which is open again, same camera raw, which you can modify. Uh, plus on the camera raw filter that you can open, not just camera raw, but you can open like JPEG or some other images that you're working with this. But it also limitations if, if you flatten image or it's not object or other things you cannot access directly to original original files on this case. They both can work somewhat similar. To, so something, maybe some options available in a camera raw that does not available in other applications and vice versa. However, um, I will say Affinity work a little bit smoother, faster when you work with raw files and it feels like it's one single integration. Something what's similar if you work with a Lightroom. So next, let's go look in Photoshop and it is power of the layers. If you ever work with original and old, old Photoshop, you know, the layers, it's what made Photoshop as it right now. And the reason is why, because I can go create new layers. I can modify, I can stack them on top and it's a beautiful work. The only problem for me with the layers, it's a limitations and primarily limitations on how many masks I can put it. Um, they do try to address this and try to link. However, masking and um, how many masks you can edit. I think that options right now a little bit behind in Photoshop. Affinity of um, addresses is much better. You can actually stack or you can create special folder for the um, masking so they can interact. It's much more complex masks you can build inside the Affinity. And on my opinion, Affinity support a little bit more complex layering. And the reason is Affinity relatively new applications. So the developers who look, they look what is Photoshop develop, what is a minus Photoshop habit and how they can improve it. And they actually take this and improve it quite a bit on this. So I will say layering and masking, it's better inside the Affinity than inside the Photoshop. Okay, so I will try to kind of keep it this in 10 minutes so we don't go that far. Uh, very fast mention what is, I think, a little bit better in Photoshop than Affinity at this point. It is support of the filters and plugins. You can have it um, filters, you have it also plugins, you have it also batch processing and other things that is much powerful inside the Photoshop because it's bigger community and they develop way more applications that work with Adobe Photoshop. So this way Photoshop is definitely winning if you look and depend on some of the plugins. Affinity, however, they have a good selection on their own filters and some of them I will wish Photoshop have it, like for example, frequency separation, and other things. I need to build my own macros in Photoshop to do this, but Affinity does this definitely much better and more effectively. So they do have it less filters, but filters what they have it, it's very effective, very nice. Uh, what they're missing in this time, it's a lot of AI integration. I think they will look at this in the future. For example, in Adobe Photoshop, you have, um, Let's go on filters. You have this neural filters. It is totally new stuff that is working. Okay, I need it. Select different picture. Okay, let's go right here. And for example, neural filters, they will allow you to create a lot of AI based processing like colorizations, restoration of photo, face adjustments, liquefy. I mean, it's a tons of tons of cool stuff and they're adding new and in included new ones coming like portrait generation and other things that AI can create it. And they're using this system called Sensei, which is very powerful. And I think this is a huge plus for the Adobe Photoshop because they can grow with this system. I don't know what is Affinity currently working on, but from the current version, they're missing these options. It doesn't mean it, uh, it's uh, necessary, but for example, in my work, I use it quite a bit. Okay, if we compare UI from Affinity to Photoshop, you definitely find a lot of similarities in this. However, even new versions have a redesign UI. I won't say it's as polished as a Photoshop. So if you look in Photoshop and you can see right here, tools are nice, very easy to identify. And they're actually very clean, clean icon because I can look very fast and know what I'm using. In Affinity, another case, I think they're a little bit messy. It is 
Unnecessary colorization, which is making them look messy, is hard to identify, and they do change some icons. So overall, I will say Photoshop as a UI have it much stronger reference. And beside that, Photoshop have it um, more solid developing on a Windows. They add additional bars on the side, like a toolbar, which I like. You can customize a little bit better than Affinity in this point, I think. However, they uh, original uh, layout for Affinity have some benefits of the previous videos and all how the windows layout. Both of them very strong, very customizable. Then next is things we can look. And as I mentioned before, Photoshop have it neural filters. Also notice they have it a lot of different Linkify, all those tools, they're very powerful. They used to have it also 3D support, but they remove it from the Photoshop. You still can kind of access but then you notice 3D is not supported. And I don't actually know how many people truly using 3D inside the Photoshop. Um, I did use it before with a bridge like uh, Adobe uh, Dust Studio and Bridge. So you can bring some 3D, mod 3D models, but they're not supported. And from what the latest I heard, um, Adobe phasing out 3D from this. I think it was unnecessary heavy structure for this. The automations, it's much stronger inside the Photoshop. So between two of these applications, which one do you like best? Um, let's look on this one, points. So as a photographer, if you take your photo and processing, and you want non-destructive, truly non-destructive process fast without any other options, I think the Affinity is have an edge on this. It's very light structured, it's performed very fast, and it's worked very well. In this case however if you work with adobe and you work with photoshop it's allowed you to do a lot of um, more complex image manipulations than affinity allowed at this point big benefits with also lightroom if you're using it's allowed you to take your images and directly put them on adobe stock and sell there so it's kind of integrations very heavy uh, but um Speak about integration, Affinity does allow some new integrations with uh, their own designer and publishers. So they have some integrations between images. You can go back and forth with this, which is nice. But again, it's not new because Adobe Photoshop or Adobe products uh, allowed this to do for a long time already. Overall, does it work for your switch? Um, if you are kind of don't look for monthly payment it's very strong competitive and I definitely will use it in my workflow however if you stay with Photoshop I will stay at this point Adobe Photoshop still the strongest right now um, image processing raster processing applications have it lots of abilities have it a lot of support from community and the plugins but uh, if you are going against the monthly fee and it's only one reason where I see if you want to switch to affinity it is if you want single purchase applications, okay? If you want kind of a little bit smoother work with raw images, and most important, if you work quite a bit with complex masking and some layer interactions, then maybe you want to look on Affinity Photo. Otherwise, Adobe Photoshop still, on my opinion, have an edge over the Affinity. Thank you for watching this uh, video. You probably already canceled, but if you continue on watching my video and supporting me, Thank you. And just let you know, I will have a soon giveaway on the several items that people send me review, like tablets and other things. So stick around here. And that is a special bonus for you. Thank you for supporting.